Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is sort of a test kind of video to see the new streaming software. I think you guys saw that other page, right? Uh, so I've just started a Twitch account, so we'll be streaming on there at JQ Poker on Twitch. This is a bit of a test. I won't be playing tonight, but we will be studying some spots in the solver. Uh, so if you guys want to watch along with me, uh, we'll get right into that. All right, guys. So we're here in the Lucid GTO solver. Doing some cash game spots. Um, I think we're going to be looking at 100 big blinds deep today. And we'll go through a single raise pot where we open in early position. Low jack. This is a six max game, so low jack is going to be effectively under the gun. Uh, against a big blind defend. Uh, and we'll, we'll go through the whole spot. So just so you guys can get familiar with the interface, right? Here's our whole cards. You can see the positions, right? We'll be playing in this configuration against the big blind a lot. You can see we have sort of three simplified bet sizings. Uh, some of them will be four on different streets and things like that. Um, but we get to just click here and select uh, what our bet sizings are uh, and what size we want to use here. You can also click here. You can see this is what kind of my range looks like opening under the gun. This is what a big blind defend range sort of would look like um, and things like that. Down here, you'll see some graphics pop up. This box that I'm highlighting here will kind of show you the optimal decision of your last, of your of my last action, broken down by how frequently the solver chooses it. Uh, and then over here, we can kind of see uh, the EV of my play and, and the previous hand and the previous. Okay. All right, on 5-5 five, five deuce with queen jack, um, I don't know if we have a ton of showdown value. I think ace highs, like ace king, ace queen, ace jack might like to check back. Um, but here on these paired, on this paired board, I think we just get a small size with a lot of range. Yeah, we could check quite a fair bit, actually. Queen high, I guess, has enough showdown value against the big blind. But we go for the small size, and he calls. King of the turn going to be better for our range than his, uh, and he checks over accordingly. I don't know if I want to go over bet here on the paired board. Uh, so I think just sizing up, trying to target hands like ace high to fold. Uh, maybe some pairs, but I don't think any pairs should really fold this turn. So probably just targeting ace high or some other hands with equity, like a 9-10 suited or something. We actually mix a lot of sizings here. It's a very interesting one. Uh, this is actually kind of the classic overbet spot here. Uh, I don't know specifically with this hand, but I I will show you guys how we're going to get a lot of overbets on these boards with a flush draw and two broadways. Um, we're going to overbet a lot of our thick value like sets, top two pair. Also going to be fast playing our nut flush draws with overbets, as well as our stronger gut shots, like ace jack, maybe with the ace of clubs or something like that. This particular hand is really bottom, so I think we're either going to be checking it to give up because we don't have a lot of equity, uh, or I think the overbet. So I think I'm going to choose this overbet size. Let's see what the solver says. Ah, actually, just betting big. Only overbetting 11%. So big blind is going to be checking 100 on this board. And like I said, actually, we're not getting as many overbets as I thought. So maybe on a board that's a little different, like a uh, King Jack 4, we might get some more overbets. You can see we're checking more with like our middling strength hands, fast playing a lot of our thick value, and starting bluffs with a lot of our, of our like no value hands. This hand in particular, you can see when we have a club draw or a back door, uh, when we have the club draw, we're more content checking. But with uh, this hand in particular, hearts, no backdoor. Backdoor straight, but real no flush draw. So just trying to play it aggressively. Okay, so we'll start off flopping the nut flush draw on a paired board. The big blind actually gets quite a few check raises, probably more than you'd think on this paired board with the 10. Even though we'll interact with it a little bit, you know. We'll have uh, all the... Uh, 10 broad suited broadways with 10x and 10 9 suited slivers of 10 8 obviously we'll have one combo of quads at full frequency so i think on the paired board i like a small bet um but i think the small bet is probably what we're gonna go for yep small bet a lot he calls big blind checks this doesn't seem like a great card because obviously now our flush draw is probably no good However, and it runs out like this, of course, someone could have quads, but when there's three of the same card on board, the nut advantage uh, really just gets leveraged to the preflop aggressor, right? We're going to have aces, kings, jacks, all that stuff that big blind probably just doesn't have. I think we actually just get to size up on this turn. 
checking a bunch, but when we do bet, yeah, we get to size up and leverage that advantage. I'm actually going to go back and look at that spot, and I want to see uh, what we're doing with our, like, nuts. So we are checking back aces a little bit, kind of as a trap, maybe to give some rope. Because uh, if he has hands like King Queen, King Jack, any random overs, right? If they hit their card, they have some reverse implied odds. I think we get to check aces a lot more here, um, sort of as like a trappy kind of thing. But you could see, yeah, we're choosing this big size with like all our over pairs, so we get to leverage. Even nines uh, kind of becomes like not the nuts, but you know what I mean. It becomes very good on this board. Okay, so we flop top top on this board. Two diamonds. I think range betting. The king eye board is probably better. Yeah. Calls. We actually get a lot of checks back. I don't know if I like checking back more with a diamond or without one. Deuce is gonna connect with the big blind a lot more than I will. I don't actually even think I have a single deuce. No, I have ace deuce, I guess, in my range. Um not a ton of deuces, but you can see just a lot more than me. Um, so I think we just kind of have to respect that and check this card back. It's actually not a bad card for the big blind to lead. Not the best card to lead. Obviously, the four would probably be better because a lot more four X dense um, than deuce X. But I think we could just play this to check back. No, never checking. Betting big. Okay. Gets donk on this board. Bit strange. I haven't seen uh, too many donks in A-side boards. But queen's too strong to fold. Probably raising is silly. Pure call. On the repeat deuce, he checks... Um, Beating flush draws. Um, and we have a lot of urge to kind of bet and deny equity from flush draws, but kind of way ahead of draws, way behind of straights and ace x. So I think this actually is a fine spot to just check back. Give them some rope to bluff, some missed clubs that they come in, and then just sort of probably folding most club rivers that aren't the queen of clubs, I think is the play. I think we go check a lot here. Yeah, check almost 100. 10 uh checks it over to us it's a really weird one to think about value betting i like to go thin for value but this one might be in a weird way too thin now i don't think he's checking three five if he flopped the straight three five suited at this point would he check ace x i also don't think so i think he's just going for value with a lot of hands that beat us so i think we get to bet Thin for value, but I actually would not be surprised if this is checked back a lot. The only thing I think we're targeting when we bet this river is a hand like 10x of clubs. So he, this portion of the range, 10x of clubs, if he has it. Um, might be just be a check back though. Uh, all right, I'm gonna check back. Yeah, check or bet small. Seven four. I compare okay uh queens again on this 10 10 6 uh again they're gonna check raise this board somewhat frequently with flush draws with 7 8 with 9 8 combo draws like that uh obviously with their 10x with 6 6 things like this maybe even their strongest sixes like a6 or something so i give his bluffs a chance to check raise actually so i think we just go small on the pair board Yep, small lot in the paired board, and he calls. He checks again. This might be a way ahead, way behind spot too, but my gut was just telling me to size up. Overbet seems ridiculous. So, might get a lot of checks here, but I think I want to go for the big bet. Target flush draws. Uh, no, I changed my mind as I'm talking through it. I think we just check a lot here. We do. We actually get a, a healthy mix. The smaller size is, is preferred. And now he leads big. Ah, uh, I mean... All right, so seven eight is a hand that probably peel. I, I think raising as a bluff is, is is too much, right? We don't block any of like the really nutted hands. Maybe queen ten we double block, but I don't know. Man. We're gonna have any queen ten? No queen ten. Oh, queen ten suited. Do we block any of the queen ten suited? So we only block queen ten of hearts, which I don't think is great. So when he bets this size, is he polar? Probably not, right? It's can still have tens, can have straights, but it's not like a crazy overbet. I think Queen's probably just calling here. Um, maybe folding sometimes. I don't think raising though. I think I think most likely we're gonna see pure call. Yeah, pure call 100%, and we beat the King Seven for the bluff. I kind of flopped the world here. 
Uh, this is probably a board that we check a lot, though, as the end of the gun. This is just going to smash the big blind range so much. Uh, with that being said, uh, we don't have a ton of check 100 spots in theory uh, as the pre-flop razor. Uh, so I suspect this is going to be a hand that we're betting, right? I think we're probably going to be betting. Uh, I actually don't know. Do we have 710? Probably not. Yeah, no, just a bit too loose. Um, so we don't have 7-5 suited either then, yeah? Okay, too loose. So, all right, if I'm going to pick hands to bet on this board in particular... Nines, eights, sixes, and this one probably the best one. So we'd probably pick ace nine of clubs, king nine of clubs, and maybe also some nut flush draw. All right, we probably have to balance ace seven of clubs, for example, would probably be very good. Like bluffing with pocket sevens or something. Some two pairs, right? If we have nine eight suited, I think this one we're gonna go small. But I don't think we get to go large, even though our hand is good. I think it's gonna be checking a ton with range. We'll look after. Yep, betting small or checking is fine too, right? Even though we have like. It's like almost a nut flop for us, right? Still have to respect a lot. When the jack comes in, it doesn't change much, actually, right? Uh, straights were already there. I think this is actually fine to keep piling money in. Uh, my gut is for small size. Overbet seems ridiculous. Big size, maybe a bit too much with our hand in particular, right? And then it would be a disaster if we go the big size and then hands like... Uh, 7-7 seven, seven start folding out or like 7-6 so it would be bad if we choose the big size i think the small size or even checking might be fine to realize we might have enough show nut value but i could be wrong not quite sure about this spot nope yeah we bet the small size and uh folds oh Whew. top top on this pretty dry board. This is a dry and static board. Dry meaning not a lot of draws. You could probably name one or two draws in this board, right? Five, six. However, no flush draw and also pretty static. Static meaning will the nuts change? Well, maybe there's some straightening cards that can come in, but ace high boards typically more static than others, right? Because top pair will stay the same. So ace king uh, is going to stay the same hand strength across a lot of these turns. And so that actually leads us to be able to check this as a trap a bit more. However, we have a good hand. It's never a bad idea to get money in the pot when you have a good hand. So I think small bet is probably the play here. And it is, but again, you can see we're checking almost 60% of the time. This is because, like I said, a lot of turns won't change the nuts, etc. This is a turn that could possibly change the nuts, like a 6-8 suited gets there, 6-3 if they have it. But I think we'll check back, um, let them enjoy some bluffs. And I also wouldn't be surprised to see some big bets here, but I think we're gonna check. Checking mostly, and otherwise we see some big bets. All right, repeat seven, and now they overbet. This is a nice, nice spot here. Okay. Nice little spot where they overbet the river. They're betting 12 into eight. They are inherently very polarized. What does this mean? They have a big bluff or a big hand. So they have full houses, strips. Actually not sure, still trying to decide in my head whether they can have straights here. On this drive aboard, slow plate sets can be a thing. So four, four, three combos, seven, seven, one combo, five, five, three combos. Beat any value. No, we don't beat any value. So if we don't beat any value against the live player pool, a lot of our bluff catchers are just more profitable as folds. The computer can probably find some bluffs here, but what are the bluffs that peel the flop? Four or five suited that's now counterfeited? Four or five of diamonds, four or five of spades. Ace four maybe? Such an interesting spot. Do we ever check like the term with aces? So now I'm thinking from a minimum defense frequency, how high up are we in our range? Do we have aces sometimes? Sure. We might be too high up in our range to fold, but I'm just having a tough time finding bluffs. All right, so if he's bluffing four or five suited, two combos, diamonds and spades. And then he has how many combos of trips? So many, right? I think last thing we'll think about is if we are folding this, what are we calling? We can call pocket aces, pocket fives. We can call seven eight suited. We can call seven six suited. Okay, I think I'm fine with the fold. 
I think we have enough hands to call with that are better. That this is fine as a fold. Call 100. Interesting. But we just lose there, right? He had 6-8. Let's look back at this. So we make the right play, quote-unquote, in the spot. But incorrect for theory. Obviously, we're jamming our full houses, right? And we we jam some of our best trips. Right? But we are calling... Pretty much down to ace jack, ace queen, pure call, ace king, pure call. So what's our most hero we call? Ace 10 might be. This is our most hero we call. Ace 10 kind of seems indifferent. Um, we really hate ace 10 of diamonds, but we don't hate ace 10 of clubs. We like ace 10 of clubs to call more because we block the extra combo suited 7, 10, and ace 7. This is why we like this more. This is why we like this ace 10 of spades more than this and less than this other one. Okay, can just fold a lot of air that we see bet with and check back. Right, so in this line when we see bet and then just check, check, we're going to have a lot of air. So I guess we get to fold just all of our air, of course. Rip the trips, rip the full houses. Yeah, I mean, live players never find this bluff, but if the big blind is, let's see what they're finding this with. Quads, of course. Full houses, a lot of straights, a lot of trips. So we're losing all of these. We're finding bluffs with king four, queen four, that are never found really in game. Five deuce finding bluffs, four deuce finding bluffs, three four finding a bluff, three three deuce deuce finding bluffs. Wow, six six finding bluffs sometimes. So yeah, so if I know he's bluffing this much, I think it's a call, but we didn't give him all that. We just kind of give him full houses and like a couple. I think it's fine. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you like this kind of stream content. I know it might be a little bit boring uh, with the studying and stuff like that, but getting better at poker. Hopefully you guys can learn along with me. If you want to join a study group for poker, you can DM at JQ Poker on Instagram. Tags are right here. I don't even have to put it up anymore. It's awesome. So we're going to be starting this kind of streaming content where I will be playing as well, not just studying. Lot. So not just a nerd, we'll ditch the glasses every once in a while and get some actual cards on the felt. But it's also obviously good to study, work your leaks, that kind of thing. So you can see I'm not perfect. I made tons of mistakes today, but all in the name of getting better. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all those good things. Follow me on Twitch, at JQPoker on Twitch. And until next time, good luck at the virtual tables.